Making a good platformer in Scratch can be quite hard. There's just so many factors to consider. So in today's video, I'll be showing you three simple tips and tricks that you can use to make your platformers better. Movement is the heart of platformers, and it's a good idea to spend time to make sure that it feels good. For now, the movement is slippery, hard to control, and the jump is floaty. In other words, the movement is, well, trash. So I increased the gravity so the jump felt less floaty, and reduced the speed multiplier. And now the basic movement already feels a lot better, but it was still missing some quality of life features like jump buffering and coyote time. But what do those two features even do? Well, coyote time is where you can be a bit off of a platform and still be able to jump. We can code this in by having a variable keep track of how many frames it was since you last touched the ground. And instead of checking if we're touching the ground now, we see if we touched the ground in the last few frames. And jump buffering basically lets you press jump slightly before you hit the ground, but the game still remembers that when you hit the ground. Its code is actually quite similar to the Coyote Times code. So when we jump, a variable is set to, for example, 5, and then every frame it goes down by 1. And in the actual jump condition, we just check if this variable is above 0, instead of checking if the jump button was pressed. These two features make the game feel a lot more fair, and it doesn't feel like the game just ignored our inputs if they were off by 1 frame. I also added a dash mechanic, which gives you a huge boost of speed. This should allow for some very cool levels in the future. The next thing is making your games look good. This can obviously be done with game art, but even more subtle things like particles and special effects can help a ton too. The first thing I did was adding some particles when you were walking, jumping, or dashing. This helped a lot, and the game was already feeling much more satisfying. Next, I was going to improve all the other stuff, like the player character, the level, the background, etc. You can make your own art or get some great ones online. OpenGameArt.org is a great place for stuff like this. But if you want to make your own art, an easy way to get great looking graphics is by going for a color scheme. I recommend Adobe Color for this, as they have a great selection of different color harmonies to choose from. After a bit of tinkering, I got this color scheme. It looks very colorful and clean, and the best part is, it only took 5 minutes. But if you want to make your own art, that's obviously an option too. Now the game is coming along really well. The next thing to do is level design. The levels should challenge the player, but not be so hard that they quit. Levels should also be interesting and convey a sense of progression. In other words, don't make the levels boring. Add new mechanics or obstacles as the game goes on. Don't just repeat the same few elements throughout the entire game or have very tedious parts. They can be difficult, but they won't be very fun to play through. Remember, difficulty doesn't necessarily equal fun. One way to add variety to the challenges is by adding some moving elements, like these saws, which can move. Just like how you can move your mouse and click the subscribe button. Anyhow, by adding some movement elements, there's also a timing for the player to consider, which can be very interesting. I also added these dash crystals, which give you back your dash when you collect them, which allows for some very cool and satisfying levels. But in terms of what you can add, sky's the limit. Just be sure to introduce them gradually, that way the player isn't overwhelmed all at once. I would also highly recommend not going for a precision platformer, as these, if done wrong, can cause the player to just quit. But of course, if you can do it in a way that's very fun, then by all means, go for it. But how do you actually know if a game is fun? This is where playtesting comes in. You can give the game to your friends or family or anybody in the normal Scratch community. It's also important to do some testing with a project in a basic state. This way, if you need to change anything, you won't have to change a million levels or mechanics that you spent lots of time on. This also makes sure that the base of your game is fun, and if it isn't, it's not much work to change it. So one thing that I've noticed from playtesting this game is that the dash mechanic is a bit rough. So we did some polishing by changing some parts of the dash, like the speed, and also made the player ignore gravity while in the dash, which lasts for about 4 frames, which is a few less than before. And now the dash already feels a lot better. So in conclusion, 3 tips for making a great platform are spend time fine-tuning your player movement, add cool game art, and have great level design. And if you're interested, the project used in the video will be linked in the description. Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you next time.